Hi, and welcome to Minnesota Travel Guys Cooking Connection. Tonight we're going to cook up a little uh, Kung Pao chicken, and we're going to do some air fried tempura vegetables. And uh, you know, I like to start off right off the bat. If you're going to get, if you're going to cook rice, we always cook brown rice here at our house. It's a little healthier, so we got to get that going right off the bat. And you know, you got to use your little mixing cup, your measuring cup out of your out of your rice cooker. I always put our rice cooker in on top of a bowl because they always tend to run over a little bit. I've got the I've got it measured up to the three cup measuring line. Just dump your three cups of rice in there. Put the lid on and start. Now brown rice takes a little bit extra long time, so you gotta want you want to get that going right off the bat. So right up, so that we've got our rice going. You always want to cut off the woody ends of your asparagus and for the purposes of stir fry I'm going to cut off quite a bit especially because it's got to fit in the air fryer so now we've got our our broccolini our green beans and our asparagus all prepped and ready to go so now we're gonna make our tempura so now the next step we're going to do is we need to get our chicken diced into one inch cubes or half inch cubes somewhere in that vicinity and uh, put it in a bat in a bowl and we are going to get that on to marinade with some flour and some sesame oil some red pepper and some garlic all right after getting our chicken cubed into one inch cubes Get rid of, make sure you clean off your knives. Use a different cutting board from here on forward. Here's chicken juice. You just don't want to mess with chicken juice, old chicken juice. It's, it'll make you sick. So just make sure you use all clean utensils after you get rid of your chicken, after you cube it. Then we're going to put in a tablespoon of red pepper, two tablespoons of sesame oil, and a half a cup of flour. Get a spoon and just really stir that up. Make sure everything is very well coated. You want that mixture to really, you want all the chicken to be evenly coated with the oil and the peppers and the flour. And then what I like to do at the very end is a little pinch of Malden sea salt across the top of that and just give it another stir. And put that in the fridge for later. Okay, and we're back in the kitchen. We are going to make our panko, or our, excuse me, our... Uh, breading for our air fried tempura. So start off with three eggs here in one deal here. And we are just gonna put a little bit of water in with those eggs. those up we're back and we've got those eggs whisked with the water and then we're gonna put one cup of flour in a bowl a decent sized pinch of Malden sea salt and a tablespoon of ginger and we're gonna whisk that around just just loosely I mean we don't have to you don't have to really do a, do a whole lot there. Just make sure that ginger is spread around a little bit. Then we've got here one and a half cups of panko because that's what we had in the kitchen. Spread that around a little bit. And then it's two tablespoons of, you could use any oil, but I'm going to use sesame oil. So that just gives it that Asian flair. And you do want to Make sure that oil gets dispensed through that panko. Because that is the only oil 
that that breading is going to see. So you do want to get that. for a little bit because I'm just going to take these and soak them in here for a little bit and we will get back to dredging these in just a little bit let's let them okay and we're back so you just take your veggies and you just put them in the panko you're not if the panko is really not going to stick well so you just don't mess around with them much get some panko on there Put them in the flour, don't shake a lot. And that's all you do. So I'm not gonna cover a whole lot of this because it's pretty darn easy. So do that. And like that. Hi, right, we're back. So now we're gonna make our Kung Pao sauce. So what we're gonna do for that is I need a little scraper. here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get chili paste you can buy that at any grocery stores you can buy it in the, in the uh, Asian section so you put a it's a one-third of a cup of chili paste in a bowl one-third of a cup of soy sauce one-third of a cup of cooking sherry One third of a cup of water. I'm going to tell you to cheat a little bit, but it says a tablespoon. I always say a tablespoon of garlic, but there's probably closer to two tablespoons of garlic here. I like garlic. So if you don't like that much garlic, stick with a tablespoon of garlic. And a tablespoon. Now I, I'm using the tubed ginger you can buy at a grocery store. Normally I, will use, I would use fresh uh, grated ginger, but I had this in the refrigerator, so I'm going to use it. It's just as good. I find it to be just as good. The tube you can find in the produce section. But your grated ginger probably has a little bit of an edge. But this is just as good. And it's a tablespoon. Either way, tablespoon. Oop. Tablespoon of ginger. And then a quarter of a cup of flour. And you just whisk that in. And you're going to end up having to whisk that two or three times before we're done to get that flour. That flour is going to settle. But you want to whisk it up, get those flavors melting, and then just set that to the side. So we're all done with our tempura. I'll bring that chlorine soup. So it's a, it's a lightly breaded tempura for an air fryer. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to put these down. We're going to, I just have a very basic air fryer. You don't need the real big fancy ones. You don't if you don't want to, but you can have the fancy ones if you want to. It's just me and my, just me and the uh, Minnesota travel wife. So we don't need a huge one. So I'm going to turn that one all the way up to as high as it goes. And it's just got a timer on it. I'm going to turn that one on, let it warm up for a full cycle of 15 minutes. And then we're going to start cooking tempura. But now I'm going to set up for the actual cooking of the Kung Pao, which will go very quickly. Hi. So now we're back at, we're going to start cooking. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to cook, heat up one of my medium sized burners here. And we are going to put in two tablespoons of sesame oil. Let that warm up for a minute. And Kung Pao chicken, I think for me, the best part of the Kung Pao chicken is peanuts, but you got to get them right. A lot of the places that you have Kung Pao chicken, they'll either, they'll either, the peanuts will be in a casserole dish all day long and they just scoop it into a to-go container and the peanuts are soggy. You got to get the peanuts crisp, but not burnt. And there is a, there is a, there's a, there, I mean, there's a, there's a close, you, you want them you want them brown but you don't want them burnt so you want 
to get that, that oil good and hot. We're going to turn that fan on just a little bit so we don't turn on the Toasting any nut. Get them in there, get them spread out. And just let them sit and watch them. So, we're still brown, or still uh, toasting our peanuts here. They're getting browner, you can start to smell them. And you just want to pull them off just when you start smelling burnt peanuts. So, they're getting brown. But you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're starting to get brown. Gotta get right before they start to get burnt. They're starting to get close. And it doesn't take long from brown to burn. But that brown tastes so good with that chicken and mommy. And then makes that mommy just pop. And I am calling it. Because they will continue to cook in that bowl. You want to actually spread them out a little bit so that they don't continue to cook too much and they cool out, all right? Put that burner right back on there. Put two more tablespoons of sesame oil in there. That pan is good and hot. Give it, oh, let's count to 10 or 15. We're gonna crank that heat up a little bit hotter. We want it good and hot, because what we're gonna do is try to put a good crisp on that chicken. So that chicken's been in the fridge marinating with that oil and the peppers, the salt and the flour and the flowers, but it binding itself to that chicken. So we're gonna dump it on there. And so that flour serves two purposes. It's gonna crisp on the chicken, and then when we meld it with the sauce later, it's actually gonna thicken that sauce also. So two purpose, two, two full purpose on the flour, all right? So there we go. Look at that, look at how yummy the beauty is there. Just go ahead and put all that flour in there. It's not going to hurt anything. Just spread it out in there. Make sure you get that chicken spread out. So in the meantime, while this cooks, we're letting this chicken cook. We are going to turn our oven on to 200. tempura which is going to be over here and I'm not going to flash over there all I'm going to do is I'm going to put those tempura battered veggies in the air fryer all I'm going to do is drop them in the air fryer and turn them on for 10 minutes I'll show you the finished product as an, of an update my pan got a little dry so I didn't add more sesame oil I added just a little I've added two more tablespoons of cooking oil any cooking oil less than anything just so we get, get that crisp on the chicken See it getting dried out because of the flour. Add a couple more tablespoons of oil. Okay, one thing I'm going to tell you, you're always going to hear from me. Chefs are never afraid to use a thermometer. Get yourself a thin, nice, thin probe thermometer. Chefs use thermometers. Don't let them fool you on TV. They use thermometers because they don't want to make people sick, especially with chicken. 165 degrees with chicken. Don't mess around with chicken. Cook at 165 degrees. You can, they can tell you all they want to say, well, when the, when, the, when the chicken bone wiggles and all this stuff, check the thermometer with 165 degrees. Don't screw around. It takes seconds. Just take a thermometer in there, especially with a good thermometer, and check it. Check it. So we're at 126 degrees. We've got a bit to go. I'll be back. All right, we are back. I have not checked the temperature yet, but these things are getting nice and golden. Let me just show you here a little close. Ooh, look at those golden little chunkies. Probably time for a temperature check. Let's do that. Total in the pan so far has probably been about five, six minutes. And we are at 160, 162, 63, 64, 65. Five, six, six, five, what do you have? We're done. 
That is good. So our chicken's done. That's perfect. So now you're going to put your peanuts back in. Stir those around. Reduce your heat to medium. That was high heat. Reduce it to medium. Remember your compound sauce over here? Stir it up. Make sure that flour is well incorporated. Make sure you get yourself a spatula because you don't want to lose any of that yummy sauce. Dump it in there. And what's going to happen is you might want to even want to take that off the heat for a minute because it's going to thicken up fast. Well, hi, we're back with the air fryer tempura. Here it is. You know, air fryer doesn't get completely brown stuff, but it gets crispy. And you can see where the where the uh, flour and the, what am I thinking of? Panko. Panko, thank you. <laughs> you got crispy. <laughs> and, and I've got in here, what I mixed up was horseradish, sesame oil, and that was it. Horseradish and sesame oil, oh, and a little powdered ginger. Just for uh, just for to make it a little sesame, just make a little Asian sauce. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna give this a shot. All right, Minnesota travel wife, give it a whirl. Okay. Let's see what we got. So we've got uh, broccolini, and you're having a, an asparagus there, which is I know asparagus is not necessarily your favorite. Mm, no, I like it. Mm. Very crunchy. Very good. And 80% less fat and calories than I could go to right. In the air fryer. Mm -hmm. Is there a trade off? Sure, there is. But it's pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. I'll take it any day. So we'll be back later with the actual kung pao. Mm -hmm. All right, we are back. Final product kung pao chicken. We will put a recipe card at the end of this. It is delicious. I've already tried it. So, One of my favorites. So I hope you enjoy this. Hope you enjoy the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to this. We're building a, a channel, and we would love to have you come along with us. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs>